Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle one of the new kids on the block, the Stormcast Secators. Now this guy here, he is from the Easy to Build kit, but this all works exactly the same as if you're painting the guys from the new Soul Wars set. So if you happen to have just gotten started with Age of Sigma, or you want to try something different, hey, check these guys out, they're so cool. Now, somebody asked me a little while ago um, how to go ahead and paint the uh, Hallowed Knights, these blue and silver fellas, and I thought this would be an interesting way to sort of kill two birds with one stone. Now, it's worth pointing out, these guys do take a little bit more work than the ordinary Stormcast, just by virtue of the robes that they're wearing, so it can seem like they are more difficult. Now, I don't think that's necessarily true. They're more time-consuming, you know, they are going to take more work, but simple techniques will carry the day. So without any more mucking around, let's get a look at what we're going to use to paint these fellas and how easy it can be. Now to begin with, the first thing you'll probably notice is that I've got them <laughs> on a stick. Now the reason for this is probably not something you're going to face with most of these Stormcast. Uh, just because he's got a little scenic base that I wanted to paint separately, I'll glue him to that afterwards. But you can do these guys perfectly well while they're already glued to their bases. Okay, ordinarily you'll just have the flat 40mm ones. Now I've started off by giving them a base coat spray of lead belcher, and then just a little bit of lead belcher out of the pot in any of the areas that I might have missed, or still had a bit of that uh, bare plastic showing through. Now after that we're going to go for a sort of a blue steel finish, because I think that's going to look really cool, and it's going to work with the rest of the colour scheme quite well. So I've got our Drakenhof Nightshade, and we're actually not going to use any Nuln Oil on the armour at all. This is quite a dark blue, like it's almost black. There's just enough colour in it that what we're going to get is that neat blue steel effect. Once that's dried, I'm going to give it a quick overbrush with Iron Breaker just to brighten it up a bit. And you might ask, why not go to a brighter colour like Stormhost Silver straight away? Now, it's because I want to be able to highlight. You might want to skip out, like if you're doing these guys really quickly, what you can do after the Drakenhof Nightshade is just to dry brush a Necron Compound over the top, and that'll look quite good, but this is just as simple. It will not take us much longer. So we'll do Iron Breaker and then just a few select highlights with Stormhost Silver to really make that armor shine. Now we'll get to all the other segments as we come to them. So instead of doing one big lineup of paints, I'll actually go ahead and uh, <laughs> put them down in the description this time. This is what we're going to use for the armor. Now make sure when you're using them that you're always giving your shades a good shake. Uh, because they can sort of pull up at the bottom and you'll get some sediment down there and these top bits won't cover you know quite as well without being mixed in properly so just a quick shake all right make sure it is all mixed in i've got my medium shade brush and i'm just going to go around now and fill in all of the silver armor if you end up getting anywhere that we're going to paint later anyway it honestly doesn't matter you know you can you can shade this whole fella in blue but really all you want to make sure you're doing is getting into all of the recesses where the blue armor is so along legs and what have you this is normally a lot simpler <laughs> on the normal stormcast because with the robes that these guys are wearing you'll sometimes find it's actually a little tricky to get to some of the you know the normal armor plates but however you get to it let's go around now we're going to get all of this Drakenhof nightshade on then we'll give them about half an hour to dry now once our Drakenhof Nightshade is dry, this is what you're going to get. Now you see I've gone up over the shoulders uh, much more than you would on an actual Hallowed Knight. Like if you're going to go do these guys yourselves, you don't need to do all of that. I've just done that up there so you can get a better look at how it will look in person. So once that's dried, you'll see on some of these guys it's going to be a little tricky <laughs> to get to some of these spots. But anywhere that you're going to struggle to, to paint you're not probably going to see very much of on the table. So just bear that in mind. Don't worry too much if everything isn't perfect. Okay, so we're going to get our iron breaker. Get a little bit on the end. I've got a medium dry brush here and just work it into the bristles. Now the trick with dry brushing is don't have too much on your brush. Okay, have less than you need because you can always go back and do another layer over the top. But if you put too much on, you got to start from scratch. So what I'm going to do is just lightly go over the areas that I want to be that nice shiny silver. So particularly around his face, you know, anywhere like that. On the back here, the sort of back part of his collar is a good spot to go for. 
But all I'm going to do is just quickly bet brown now and get all of these big areas of armor and brighten them up. And you'll see how quickly we get that shine back on. All right, now you can see how much of a difference that makes along the armored areas. So that's quite cool. And I really like how easy that is to achieve. <laughs> so I've got now my Stormhost Silver. And this is purely optional. You might like how this looks. Um, I particularly suggest try it on Liberator first and see what you like the look of. But if you want to do those really bright highlights, grab yourself a uh, standard brush or a medium layer brush. I always forget what they're calling them now. And just get a little bit of that onto some of those high points. Now this will probably not show up terribly well on the camera here, but just anywhere that you want it to really shine. And if you find there's any areas that have gone a little bit patchy under your dry brush, you can kind of fix them up with this bit of Stormhost Silver. And with the basis of his armor complete, it's time to do the gold details. And for that, it's really quite simple. We're going to start off with Retributor Armor, give it a little bit of Reichlin Flesh Shade, and then we come down to a choice which is up to you. I am going to quite like the sort of deeper, warmer gold. So when I've done the Reichlin Flesh Shade, I'm going to go back up and touch up some areas with Retributor Gold, uh, Retributor Armor, sorry. You might want a brighter, shinier gold, in which case layering on Auric Armor Gold will bring that up a little bit more. Whichever the case, highlight it with your Liberator Gold, but there's just that sort of point of order there. If you do want a, a brighter, you know, more, I guess, clean, tidy, fresh and polished looking gold, Auric Armor Gold is that sort of highlight you're going to want first of all. I'm going to stick with Retributor Armor because I, I think it's going to work better with the, the look I'm going for. But you experiment, see what you like the look of. Whatever the case though, let's get open our Retributor Armor. Now here I'm using, you know, one of my little cheap brushes just because I like how it holds its point. Um, you might find it easier to use a small layer brush for some of these areas, or you might even want to use a medium layer brush. But whatever it is you're using, this is nice and simple. All you want to do is fill in the areas that are going to be gold. Now, it's important, always try and be painting away from what you want to be silver. Like, for example, these shoulder pads, I'm going to be painting those blue in a minute anyway. But if you can, paint away from the stuff that you have already finished so that you don't have to touch it up if your brush goes awry. So, as well, the head of this hammery bit here now I'm going to paint away from the silver uh, head of the hammer, or mace or whatever it is, because again, I'm going to go back over in a little bit and touch this up with some Null Oil, but I want it to stay silver, whereas all of this stuff, I'm going to paint anyway. So I'm going to go around now, we'll fill in all of the gold areas. Remember as well that you've got the uh, edge of the shield to fill in if you are doing a Secator who has one of those. Now there is a lot of gold on these dudes. <laughs> if you've got a shield, there is even more. But uh, I think with the blue that's going to go on them, you know, we're going to have all of these robes, you'd have the shield, the shoulder pads, that gold is really going to help set that off. So I like there being a lot of it. Whichever you're going to do though, let's grab some Reichlin Flesh Shade. And you can use the same, you know, medium layer brush, whatever it is you're using, and just go over your gold areas. You don't need a huge amount of this, like I am probably putting on <laughs> a little too much if I'm honest. But I'll come back around and I'll, I'll peel some of that off. Yeah, you just want enough to get into the recesses and give some shading. So around you go, get your gold done with some Reichland Flesh Shade. Now after the Reichland Flesh Shade has dried, it's going to look a little bit orange if I'm honest, but don't worry. Get your next gold color. So like I said, I'm going to go back to Retributor Armor, but you might want to use Auric Armor Gold. And what you're going to do is, if we get on the shoulder pad here, it's a good look. Just do in about half with your original gold color. Because then you're going to get your nice shading in the recesses while keeping the original color. So just go around. You don't need to be very generous with this, mostly. Just catching the edges and, you know, fixing up this gold so it doesn't look quite so orange anymore. Then finally, grab yourself a small layer brush. You can stick with the medium if you're feeling uh, <laughs> a 
bit tricky. And instead of using the tip of your brush here, try using the side and you can just get around and catch the very edges of all that sharp detail with a bit of Liberator Gold. Some areas you are going to need to use the tip of your brush, but just take your time, go around and fill in now those extreme highlights. Now as for the blue sections, you've got a couple of options. You can paint them all in the same way. So the cloth and the armor plating, you can do them, you know, identical. I like to do a little bit of a split though, so that they do look like different materials. So I'll show you how I'll do that. First off, you're going to use Cantor Blue on the armor plates. So shield, shoulder pads, that sort of thing. Then after we've done a wash, we're going to highlight that with Calgar Blue. The cloth will start off with a base of McCrag Blue. Then once that's had its shade, we're going to highlight with a Latok Blue. And then any really sharp bits we want to do, like along the very edges of his knees or on the very tips of his cloak, we'll do some Hoeth Blue there. So, like I said, if you if you want to just do it one way, um, I think the McCrag blue, probably with Calgar blue, will sort you out all right. It'll, it'll look much the same. But because I want a little bit of variety between those two materials, that's how I'm going to do it. So we'll start off with that Cantor blue. Now, Cantor blue is a really nice, deep, dark blue. So I've got just a little bit of water here in my brush, just to get this on. You'll notice that it doesn't cover perfectly, and that's all right, because we're working from quite a bright sort of base here. Now just get around, and you want to do the whole shoulder pad in, just being careful when you come near to the gold. Okay, so this will probably need two coats. What I'm going to do is I'll finish both those sides off now, though, and we'll see how it looks once it's dried. Now, doesn't that look nice? I love Cantor Blue. <laughs> it's such a nice deep color. Now I've got my Calgar Blue here, and we're actually going to do the highlights before we do the wash. Because Calgar Blue is fairly sharp. So what I'm going to do here, if I just get everything in position, here we go, is again we're going to use the edge of our brush rather than the tip, and just drag along these high points on the shoulder pad. You drag towards the center so that you're going to get most of the color collecting up there. And if you fancy, you can do like smaller little lines just around the edges, around those corners there, just to give you a bit more shape. But all I'm really concerned about is those, you know, the actual edges there. So I'm going to go around now and we'll finish the other two of those off. Now after that stage, you could go ahead and give it the Dragonhof Nightshade. But honestly, seeing it like that, I actually quite like how that turned out, so I'm going to skip that and leave them how it is like that. What I've got next though is my McCrag Blue, and you'll probably find this easiest for some of the larger areas. Use a uh, small base brush or a medium base brush. I'm just going to go around now, and with our McCrag Blue, you see it's much lighter. Uh, McCrag Blue, I'm going to go around and base coat all of these robes. Now, the little tabard bit at the front here. Uh, you want to leave that for the time being. That's going to be a different color. But the, the main part of these robes, you'll probably find you do need a second thin coat of this over the top just to make sure that that color is going to be nice and solid. Now we're starting to get somewhere. <laughs> now he's actually looking a lot closer to finished and you can start to see how this is all going to come together. So I've got my Drakenhof Nightshade again and you can grab yourself a, a shade brush or I'm just using a, you know, a larger brush here. I want a nice point on it though, because I don't want it to go crazy. What I'm going to do is just paint over all of the blue. Well, the cloak it itself, that is. And just paying attention to make sure that this does end up flowing into the recesses. Because uh, we want that nice shading effect. Let's get in there. Now, once your Drakenhof Nightshade is dried, you can get in with a little bit of McCrag Blue if you want to. All right, this is a purely optional step, but I like doing it to smooth things out a little bit. Just any of those bigger areas of flat color, get your McCrag Blue again, and you want to just, you're basically polishing here. You know, anywhere where the, the shade might have collected in a slightly strange way, you can just touch it up and flatten things out a little as you like with this. 
Um, it's also a good way if you want to, you know, really maximize your shading that you can build this up into a nice smooth transition between the darker areas that you're going to leave behind and then when we get to our highlights. So you don't need to be particularly careful with this and like I said, purely optional, but I'm just getting around now. You can see this is very, very quick treatment. So let's get back to this and have a look once we're finished. Now I am forever banging on about these being the easy way to do things. It's not a particularly, you know, it is a little more time consuming. It's not the fastest way, but I think it makes a big difference. You know, it is simple to do, but you can skip it. So that's your choice there. Now I've got my Alatoc blue and just an ordinary uh, medium detail, medium detail, medium uh, layer brush. And let's just get along some of the edges of these creases. You'll notice it's a little almost turquoise going on, but you'll see quite quickly how it dries and it blends in very nicely with the rest of our cloth. So in this way, we're going to use it to make it look different to the armor. So go around now and, sorry, just as ever, concentrating, whispering. <laughs> what we're going to do is I'll pick out all of the edges that I want this nice brighter blue to help accentuate. Then you can grab your Hoeth blue and I've got my small lay brush here and you're looking to pick out just any real extreme edges. We want those folds to be very pronounced so just a little bit of this. You don't want to use quite as much as you have with the first blue. Just anywhere that, oops, that might be a bit much. <laughs> anywhere that you want to uh, accentuate the real edges of this cloak. Now, as far as the blue, there's our fella done. And you can see it's quite quick. There are a couple of steps you can sort of, you know, gloss over and make a little bit faster, but that's not too difficult to do. So definitely, if you want to spend the time on them, just, you know, use those simple bits and pieces to get them looking real nice. What we're going to do next, though, is the rose. And that's real simple. There's only three colors to this. We're going to need a Rakarth Flesh, Seraphim Sepia, and then Screaming Skull. Okay, you can probably guess <laughs> how this is going to go. So you'll probably find with the uh, tabards on these guys that you want to start with maybe a small base brush or uh, even a medium layer brush. But I'm going to pick something up. Let's get started on that now. Now I've got my, this is kind of like a small base brush. And all we're going to do is straight on with the Rakarth Flesh. Just taking your time as you get close to anywhere that you have already painted. Because we've reached the point, we've done a fair bit of work on this fella, and we don't want to mess it up. So, like I said, you might want to switch down to a smaller brush when you're getting to areas that are quite close to what you've already done. So I'm going to go around here, and we'll just get all of these tabard areas base-coated in Rakarth flesh. Now we've got our Sarah from Sepia, and you want a lot of control where this is going to go. So... A medium layer brush is a good choice for this. All you're going to do is all over your Rakarth flesh, get in there, and just paint it on with this brush. Okay, Anywhere that it pulls and gets really dark, you can sort of edge it off the edge of your brush there and shift it around a little bit more. All you're really looking to do is shift up the tone a little bit so you've got that nice sort of yellowy finish to it. Okay, and that's going to work really well, I think, with the gold and the blue. So let's go around to the other side now. Now with just that shade applied over the top of the Rakarth flesh, we've changed up its tone quite a bit. So now instead of looking that pale, gross skin tone, <laughs> you've got a nice sort of, you know, off, off yellowy sort of beige. Uh, and that works really well, I think, to offset all the blue that we're doing. So what I've got now is a little bit of Screaming Skull, and I'm just prepping this up on my brush here. And what we're going to do is, you guessed it, just some real simple highlights. And we can use the edge of our brush for most of these too, just because of how much really pronounced uh, detail there is in these robes. Now in some areas you're going to need to swap on down to the tip of your brush, but don't worry too much when it comes to that, just take your time, and where possible, Orient yourself so that you're just dragging your brush in one direction, straight down.
We'll take a little bit of time. Now the heat and humidity at the moment <laughs> does highlight, no pun intended, how difficult it can be on occasion to get a nice smooth line. And, you know, oh well, but I don't think that looks too bad. You know, once he's on the table, it's not going to matter too much. If I wanted to fix it up, um, I could get in there with a little bit of a shabty bone to tidy those lines, but I don't think it really detracts overall from the whole thing. What we get onto now is the leather, and there's not really very much of that, just these little hangy dangly bits on the front of him there, and the backs of these, uh, these leather gauntlet carrier things that he's wearing. These are so cool. We're only going to need four colors for this, and you can skip one of them entirely if you're feeling uh, <laughs> in a rush. We're going to start off with Rhinox Hide, give it a wash of non oil, quick highlight with some Doomball Brown, and that'll give us the base of that nice warm leather color, and then we'll do the very edges in Tusk or Fur. Nice and quick, so let's get on to it. Now here, all the usual caveats about being careful, we have already painted apply, so just take your time. If you do hit anywhere like these little metal deals, uh, don't worry too much about those, because we can touch those up really easily. But just avoiding your armor and your tabard that you have already painted, go in and we're going to cover over these areas. Now after getting that uh, Rhinox hide on them, it actually turned out to be a fair bit darker than I expected. So I'll tell you what, we can probably skip the non oil entirely. Let's just go ahead and highlight up straight from here. So I've got a little bit of Doomball Brown on just an ordinary. I'm going to use our medium layer brush for this because you can be quite generous with it. It'll look fairly bright going on, but let's just do the edges of all of these leather areas. And as this dries, it'll darken down quite a bit. You'll see what I mean when we get to that. But whatever you're doing, just get in and we'll highlight all of this nice warm leather. And then with a little bit of tusk or fur, just any really extreme edges. So right on the tips. There we go. Just a little bit there. Now there's really only one detail left, which is unique to the Sacrosanct Chamber. And that's these little soul gems they got going on. So what I'm going to do is get myself some Celestra Grey. And we'll just get in a base coat. This whole thing in that just off white color. As always, being careful when you get to the edges, we have already painted something. And at the same time, we'll get up and we'll do the lightning bolts. Oops, if we can see the bloody things. <laughs> do the lightning bolts on his hammer. Uh, you can do the same on a shield if he happens to have one of those as well. And you can glaze your gem with just a little bit of Gilliman Blue. Then from there, you can highlight with just a little bit of white scar. Both this little dealie here and any of the little white details that you just painted in. Now there's really only one last major area of colour to do, and that is going to be the haft of his hammer here, or his mace. Now I've seen this done all manner of different ways, but I'm going to stick to you know how it is in the book. And that's going to be nice and simple, pink horror, sorry, scream of pink, agrax earthshade, and then pink horror. So Without further ado, <laughs> let's finish that area off too. Now the main reason that we've left this to last is really that it's the easiest part to reach. And uh, as a result, you know, we're not likely to go over and hit anything while we're painting it in. So watch as I now make a mess of things. <laughs> All you're going to need is probably just the one coat of this. It covers fairly well. But whether you've got the mace or the smaller hammers, you know, this is the same steps. Now while that's drying, we're going to step outside the steps a little bit, just get some iron breaker in any of the areas that you want to go back over and make sure are metal. So little buttons here and there, like this little chain link doodad there. Just take your time and cruise around whilst that, uh, what do you call it? I keep wanting to call it Scream of Pink. It is Scream of Pink. Well, the Scream of Pink <laughs> is drying. Just get into that now. Now we can just get a little bit of Agrax Earth Shade and just straight over this purple. Then just like before, while that's drying, we can take the time to score a little something else. So I've got here just a little bit of black 
We'll just do in these little, I don't know if they're straps or parts of this container. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> I think they look good done in black. So let's just touch those in. And if you feel like it, you can also do the beads at the same time. Now, once the Agrax Earth Jade is dried, there's two ways that you can do this next stage, highlighting with the pink horror. And either you can grab yourself your small layer brush and, you know, essentially paint in the lines. Or if you've got an older brush, like I've got one of my little cheap brushes here, maybe you've got an old uh, small base brush, you can trim that down to make quite a good small, small dry brush. Just really lightly flick along the purple bits on the front of the hammer here. And you'll notice it doesn't take much. Just keep carrying your brush in the same direction against the grain. Ta-da! Done. And honestly, with that, that is our Stormcast done. So what I'm going to do now is pop him on his base. And there we have it guys, he is finished. All I gotta do is the ring around the edge of his base there and he is ready to rock and roll. Now this is one of the bases that came from the uh, easy to build kit. So all it was is a matter of painting it. And I know a few of you have asked about sort of how I do bases before. So I'll touch on that in a later video. But for now, our uh, Stormcast here, the Sikator is complete. And man, these guys are cool. Like I love these models. I really think the robes add a whole lot to the appearance of the Stormcast. So, as ever, if you found anything useful, feel free to drop it in the old comments box below. You can also get in touch with me on my Facebook or Twitter, which are both linked there too. So, as ever, thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.